Welcome again to The Secret of the Golden Flower. And before we continue with the text, there's something I would like to say to the people who have been following this series for some time. This series and the previous one, Post Enlightenment, are about my experience after enlightenment. Now, Words are very limited in what they can convey about spiritual life in general, and enlightenment in particular, because enlightenment is, by definition, transcendent. It is beyond words and symbols. In fact, the Buddha's instructions on how to attain enlightenment involve completely letting go of name and form, words and their definitions. So, to reach Nibbana, one has to let go of words completely. Then how can words express, how can they explain what enlightenment is, or what post-enlightenment is? You see the problem? So, I have here over 100 videos and they begin from very easy, very common sense, very human level, the foundation series. Then after that is matrix learning, because ordinary learning techniques are not going to be powerful enough to learn the message, to understand this message that I'm trying to get across to you. And then the next one is being in the world, which beginning from the basic platform of skeptical existentialism gradually brings us to the base of the Buddha's teaching. Then it goes on from there. So many series. And each one gives some very important prerequisites without which this series, and especially the one before it, are going to be incomprehensible. So it's very uh, obvious in the attacks that the religious people have made on me. They never attack or even mention my teachings. They only take aim at my character. <laughs> Why is that? Huh? Do you think maybe it's because they can't understand my teachings? Do you think maybe it's because they haven't even learned how to use a dictionary? And they misunderstand even their own teachings, even their own religion, what to speak of someone else. And I am original. I am a creative person. I'm an artist by nature. I use these different systems of thought as a field for creative art. So the way I express myself is not going to be like anybody else. It's not going to be recognizable as Buddhism or Hinduism or even Taoism or thisism or thatism. I'm expressing these things in my own way. And without the proper background, you will not understand. You may think you understand, but without the actual experience, of course, you don't really understand. And without the proper intellectual background, you can't even understand the symbols, the words that I'm using, because I'm using them in my own way. I put my own meaning into the words. 
So when I say Nibbana or Tao or any of these terms, they are in what to say like a private language. Huh? It's called Dharma talk or Dhamma talk. Dhamma language uses the same words as ordinary language, but it gives them a different meaning. This is basic. So when people, for example, the other day, somebody comment, commented on another video, why all this talk and no methods? <laughs> Maybe the talk is the method. Maybe the language itself, if understood, leads directly to the experience of enlightenment. How is that possible? Well, I've studied something called ontology. And ontology is basically the science of being, not knowing, not doing, not having, being. So, of course, most of us have no language to describe being. They have some language to describe feelings and so on like that. But as far as being, they're pretty much illiterate. So what can I say? If you haven't done your homework, you will not be able to apply this understanding. But if you have, if you understand the ontology behind this series, it will automatically lead you to enlightenment. You just sit down, open your mind, open it wide, let everything in. Don't concentrate. Huh? Open your mind wide and just allow whatever is going to happen to happen. And if you have the proper understanding, the proper view, then automatically enlightenment will happen all by itself. This is a rather daring statement, but I've made many daring statements around here. The thing is, people misunderstand. They think I'm going to give them a procedure, a cookbook, a list of steps, huh? Step one, step two, step three. Well, let's take one list of steps. The Buddha's Noble Eightfold Path. What is the first step? Right view. What does right view mean? Well, what is a view? A point of view means looking from a certain place. Huh? From one point of view, all you see is a brick wall. <laughs> from another point of view, you can see in behind the brick wall. And from still another point of view, you can see out. It depends on where you look from. So right view is the very first step. And if you really want to know the next step, it's right understanding. What does that view mean? How do we express it in words or symbols? You see? I would say, <clears throat> excuse me, 95% of the work involved in self-realization is attainment of right view. And if you think I'm just babbling here for no purpose other than to hear my own voice, you have missed, you have totally missed. The medium is the message, and the medium I'm using is a self-created artistic, linguistic, semantic, ontological language. This is not simply an old man rambling on about his memories. And which is why I don't talk about my own experiences that much. They say, oh, we don't want to hear about all this other stuff. We want to hear about your experiences. Well, what good are my experiences going to do you? You need to have your own experience and not simply copy somebody else's or imagine that you are experiencing the same thing because you're not. 
It's impossible. As Heraclitus said, you can't put your foot in the same river twice. And as Osho said, you can't even put your foot in the same river once. By the time you're, from the time your toes enter the water till the time your whole foot is in, the water has flowed. The river has changed. It's not the same anymore. And it will never be the same. Your enlightenment is yours. My enlightenment is mine. I cannot transfer it to you even if I wanted to. And even if I could, it would be cheating you because the whole thing is the journey. You have to be comfortable and patient with taking the journey, taking all the time you need, doing all the work, whatever it takes. There is no shortcut to experience. They say 10,000 hours is needed to master anything, any art or skill. I would say that's maybe a minimum. This enlightenment is not cheap. You're not going to get it just by watching some videos. You can take the information you get from the videos and then do the work, do the practice. That will get you there. But without right view, the practice is not going to be effective. Without right understanding, you're not going to get the actual practice. Content and context. Well, what is the meaning of what I'm saying? It's only understandable if you have the proper context. Otherwise, you will assign wrong definitions to the words. You'll get the wrong idea. You'll do the wrong practice, or you'll do the right practice wrongly, or you'll do the right practice rightly with the wrong understanding and miss it. That's what's happening. That's why people aren't becoming enlightened. That's why in all of these big organizations and big temples and monasteries and all, nobody's becoming enlightened. Why? They give the wrong meanings to the words. They take the instructions the wrong way. So when I say go back and watch the previous series, I'm not just making work for you. It's absolutely necessary to understand what I'm saying now. So please don't waste your valuable time. Go back, do your homework, get your background, read your sutras, then come here and watch this and you'll get it. Huh? If you can't just turn around and have an enlightenment experience almost immediately, you're not getting it. You should be able to attain within a few days. Huh? <laughs> There's this one story I love to tell about this uh, psychiatrist from New York. And <laughs> he told me, every summer I go to Thailand to Buddha Das Bhikkhu's monastery, and I do the rains there. Two months of solid meditation. And I said, 25 years? Wow, you must be really enlightened by now. This is before I had attained final enlightenment. He said, you must really be enlightened now. He says, no, oh no, no. I'm still working on my childhood traumas. <laughs> the guy is sitting in meditation in a sacred place. Huh? his teacher's monastery, and he's psychoanalyzing himself on his childhood traumas. <laughs> Do we have some misunderstood terms? Yes. Grossly misunderstood. That's not meditation. It's not even concentration. That's masturbation. Mental masturbation. So 25 years of that, he is wasted. When I told him this, he became angry and blocked me. <laughs> that is one of the symptoms of misunderstood terms. We go over it in, this, in the Matrix Learning series in great detail. So if you're watching this video and you're going, what the heck is he talking about? Or even worse, this guy is an idiot. No, 
You have misunderstood terms. And they're usually the little words, not the technical terms, because you know you don't understand those. And if you have any integrity, you're going to go and look them up. But the little words, if, that, for, such, that, which, out, such, up. Up has 23 different definitions, dude. Which one applies in the context? You have to be able to think analytically about language to get rid of language. To transcend speech, name and form. You have to understand what it is. To transcend sexuality, you have to go deep into your sexuality. To transcend anger, you have to go deep into your anger. Like Jung said, Jung said. Enlightenment is not about imagining figures of light. It is about going into your darkness and bringing the light to your darkness. Truer words were never said. So instead of this airy-fairy, new age, or religious spirituality, we're talking about boots on the ground, nose to the grindstone, work as spirituality. And I lay it all out in my previous videos. And if you, if you cheat yourself and try to skip to this series without going through the other ones, you won't get it. You'll be wasting your time. Don't waste your time. Go back, view the earlier series, then come back and do this advanced work. It's like skipping to the end of a novel. You know, really, the whole pleasure in a novel, a good novel anyway, is the journey. All the steps that the story goes through to reach that powerful climax at the end. So don't cheat yourself. Go back and do your homework. And now I've used up almost all the time. <laughs> but I'm going to read the next verse anyway. The Book of the Yellow Castle says, In the field of the square inch of the house of the square foot, life can be regulated. The house of the square foot is the face the field of the square inch in the face. What could that be other than the heavenly heart? In the middle of the square inch dwells the splendor. In the purple hall of the city of jade dwells the God of utmost emptiness and life. Now, this is so, so beautiful, so profound. See, this is not technique. This is poetry. Try to understand. The literal mind cannot approach enlightenment because it's dependent on name and form. The technical mind, huh? Would not make any sense out of these <laughs> statements. <laughs> but the poetic mind, the feeling mind, emotional intelligence, and especially one which is backed up by actual experience of self-realization, can easily understand what's being said here. I went over it in the last episode. The Agnya Chakra, the square inch, huh? the field in the middle of the house. Now, where do you have a field in the middle of a house? Well, if you know ancient culture, ancient civilization, in the old days, families lived in big common houses, and they were more like a compound than a house. It was a, an area with a wall around it, usually a square wall, aligned with the poles, north and south, east and west. And in the wall itself were built the family's quarters, on the outside of the wall were the shops and stores and other areas that interface with the public. 
And on the inside of the wall were the living quarters. And then in the middle of the house is a field. Try to understand. You see, the meanings of the words change over time. When you hear the word house, what the name gives rise to a form in your mind. You think of an ordinary house today, an enclosed space. But in the old days, a house was more like what we would call a compound. It was a wall surrounding a big open field, some of them quite large. So what is obvious to someone who is writing or speaking may not be obvious at all to the one who is reading or hearing. They need background. They need deep knowledge of the world and the view of the writer or speaker. So without understanding my view, without understanding my background, you can't possibly understand what I'm talking about today. Now, if you have similar experiences, maybe you could get some of it. But the only way is to go back and review what I have already disclosed. It's the only way. I'm sorry. I wish there was an easy way. I wish I could just put some code up on the screen and boom, you become enlightened. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, I sure wish I could do that. I mean, really, I've looked into all kinds of technologies, subliminal technologies, uh, AI, and how they could be used to enhance the process of enlightenment. And it, it always comes down to the same problem. The critical path in enlightenment is to associate directly, personally, with a realized being. The Vedas say, Upanishad epigachati. That means you must come close and sit down and hear. Upanishad, come close, sit down. Epigachet, you must do it if you want to attain enlightenment. Now, if you don't care about enlightenment, if you just want to have a guru as an ego decoration, huh, then no problem. But I won't allow that. And if I catch anybody doing it, I'll smash them. Why? Because they are cheating themselves, they're cheating you, and they're trying to cheat me. And I don't allow people who don't have good integrity in my space. So, if you want to really get the value from this series, do your homework. Go back and get the meanings of all this. In the middle of the square inch dwells the splendor, uh, the light. And to circulate the light, one first has to see the light. Well, that's not quite true. You can begin the circulation process simply by intention alone. But Man, that takes good intelligence and good guidance. And so few people have that these days. So I don't know what to tell you. I keep telling people, if you're serious about this, you know, when people contact me, either by email or like on Facebook or whatever, I tell them, look, if you're really serious about this, come here and sit with me for some time. And... Some people have come over the years, maybe a dozen or so, or 20 at the most. And you know what happens? After a while, they betray me. They become enemies. And they start spreading all kinds of nasty rumors about me that aren't true. That's what's happened so far. Only one has only, there's only one who has come and stayed with me for some time that didn't do the nasty rumor part, although he did betray me and leave me. So, does anybody have integrity today? Does anybody do what they say they were going to do? 
Like today, I, I hired someone to come and clean. Well, because my place needs a good deep cleaning. And they didn't show up. I mean, I'm going to pay them above market rate. But they didn't come. Does anybody do what they say they're going to do these days? And not in my experience. Everyone's cheating. Everyone's lying. No integrity. Without integrity, you will not be able to attain self-realization. Period. So watch the series Being Integrity while you're at it. Though Dems the rules. So I'm not like some other masters who can tolerate curious people coming. Huh? First of all, if you're watching this YouTube video, you're a curiosity seeker as far as I'm concerned. You're not even a student. You're just curious. And if you were to come here, which by the way is not easy because I screen people. I test people before I allow them to come. It might take six months or a year from the time you contact me before I say, okay, come on. I have to be certain that you're sincere. Most people aren't sincere. Most people are just curiosity seekers. And they're window shopping. They're going from guru to guru, or from teacher to teacher, from method to method, from different <laughs> meditations to other different meditations, never getting anywhere, going around and around in circles. Curiosity seekers. Once you choose and you commit and you say, okay, I'm going to come, and you arrive and you show up, okay, then you're a student. Student. Not a disciple, not a devotee, and certainly not a fellow self-realized person. I want friends like me who have integrity, who have knowledge, who have strength, who have wisdom, who have love. I want to be surrounded by strong people who I can accept as an equal. And so far, I haven't met even one. So before you uh, put this series aside as something uh, lightweight or pretentious, who else can explain this book? Huh? In the purple hall of the city of Jade dwells the god of utmost emptiness and life. I know what this means. <laughs> I experience it every day. I don't need a book to tell me. And I can show you, you can experience this meaning too, but you have to earn it. You have to deserve it. 